funny is that, well, if all the sidebars are the same, then, uh, well, oh, sorry. This is how it looks when it opens it. It pushes that up into the right spot. So anyways, people figured out, well, let's do that. <laughs> we do that, and this also doubles as a torque wrench. So, so, so not only are we defeating the side pin, but we have a nice handy little torque wrench to use. Um, so, and then it, it essentially after this, it becomes a standard sledge cylinder because the rest of the pin, the side pin wouldn't matter. And there's no difference between an Everest and a standard sledge doorknob besides the side pin. Next feature is sidebars. The sidebars are actually really cool and what make many of these different locks uh, impervious to a lot of things. Not completely invulnerable, but pretty good. Give me a second. By the way, you know you have a problem when all the keys can't fit into this box. <laughs> oh, <laughs> speaking of blanks, I got a key ring of blanks that I don't even have locks to go to. So they're, they're really not hard to obtain. Okay, I quit, but uh, I need a vanna up here. Good. Okay. 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 So, anyways, um, oh boy, find the key for that. You know what it looks like. Okay. So this uh, this is an Asa V10, and what it is is the sidebar is essentially a series of other pins over to the side here, uh, and the lock is cut in a special way. It's like essentially it's a set of side pins. And when all the side, the side pins are raised to the right height, this little piece right here will slip out and it'll allow the, the plug to turn. Um, what's good about the sidebar is that many different keys can have different sidebars. sidebars. So you can't do something, um, well, in general, you can't do something like they did with the Everest where you just file it in half and you have a working sidebar key. But this specific Asa V10, um, they didn't think it out very well. They decided for a given region, the San Diego area, we'll give, we'll just ship all the keys with the same sidebar because that'll make it real easy on locksmiths. They could just have a stock of these sidebars and cut it. Problem is, is that that produces that Everest problem again, and it also becomes a big problem when we get into bumping, uh, which we'll see later. But otherwise, secure sidebar implementations um, such as the Medico, which this Medico, which will is actually the next slide. Okay, um, work much better. And also note that this ASA has a lot of other security features like this custom pin right here as well as those two little places to catch it. So it's, it's considered a very hard to pick lock, um, but not, not so hard to bump because of the sidebar problem. And I have it here, uh, and actually I have pictures. So you see right here is a picture of the little sidebar pins. I don't know if that's visible, but hopefully. And then here's a picture of the key. It has that of cuts that touch the sidebar pins and raise them to the right places. That. Okay. <laughs> That's what I thought. It's, it's too late now. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Quit. Uh, okay. So this Medico, which I just showed you, has quite a few... It's in the fucking lock is where the key is. <laughs> <laughs> I, I give up. I give up. Okay. So axial rotation a sidebar, but the sidebar is manipulated in a different way. Instead of having that, those side cuts to raise the pins to the right height, they said, hey, why don't we use our existing pins and modify them? And when these existing pins are rotated to the right position, they'll engage the sidebar, and the sidebar will fall into them. And on the picture, you can see these, these little dimples in the keys. And you'll also see that the keys are cut, slanted on the bottom. And that's so that they fit on to this key in the so that they are rotated properly. And it's a really ingenious design um, just because that makes it so much harder to pick and so much harder to bump because you can't bump with an angled key. Um, the physics of it don't work. And it's very hard, but not impossible, to pick this because of having to rotate those pins to the right place as well as raise them to the right height. Um, so it's a very, very secure lock um, by all of today's standards, which is probably what somebody said about this. 
50, 60 years ago. So all of these locks that we've seen so far have been pin tumblers because they're based around pin stacks uh, and they tumble. Um, but there's other types of lock. There's warded, tubular, and dimple. And tubular and dimple are essentially the same pin tumbler technology, uh, but they, they modify it in such a way that makes them more or less secure depending on the lock. So warded locks, I'm sure a lot of you have seen these. Um, they're really popular in outdoor areas. Keys look like in the picture. They're not pin tumbler keys because they're not pin tumbler locks. And instead of operating on pin stacks, they operated on latches and springs. And there's only one latch that you have to pop and the shackle will release itself. And the other latches just serve so that when you put the wrong key in, they'll, they'll hit against it and it won't be able to turn properly. Um, and warded locks, they don't require, but uh, they sell warded picks, which are much, they're hand tailored to warded locks. Um, again, you buy them or you can make them yourself. And warded locks are made um, because they're much more rugged than, uh, than pin tumbler locks because all they have is that latch and all that latch needs to do is pop up. Um, and it's good in outdoor areas where there's a lot of dirt and um, you know, natural problems, uh, whereas a pin tumbler would just clog up and not be able to rotate and you know, put all those springs in the right position and all that sort of stuff. And so that's what it looks like on the inside. And all you need to do is pop that latch out of the way for that um, bolt, the shackle, to pop up. And so here's a picture, and that's what the keyway looks like. And inside you could see right here these false wards, which will prevent the wrong key from turning. And mo the old school lock looks like that, and that's a warded. Tech that's warded. Um, all of those that look like that, for the most part, are probably warded. You know, the big dungeon kind of key that's warded. Uh, and there's an example of warded picks, and you can see they're a lot different than pin tumbler picks, as they're a lot shorter, and the designs are much different. So, see, whereas pin tumbler picks are very long and slender, those are very short and very my. God damn it. I don't see why they have the other window open if I'm doing the slideshow. <laughs> Anyhow. So tubular locks. You'll see these mostly on bending machines, on other stuff. We actually have a tubular padlock, um, which is kind of neat. Um, not unheard of, but just uncommon for people to go in and buy a tubular padlock. No, I don't need it. Um, and they're essentially pin tumblers, and they're arranged in circular stacks of four, seven, or eight. Uh, there's varying other ones, but seven and eight are generally the most common you'll find. And they have tub a tubular pick. And you could also use ballpoint pen casing on really crappy tubular locks, which is interesting because uh, the kryptonite in the pick, um, Mark Tobias, a real good lock guy who gave a talk at DEF CON about bumping, um, he figured out that you could put a, bi a big pen in open up the lock in seconds, which Kryptonite wasn't very happy about, but <laughs> it did, um, they didn't, you know, say bullshit, they, well, they might have said bullshit, but they uh, essentially switched to a disc-based lock, and their locks are much better for it, um, in my opinion. And again, commonly found on vending machines, bicycle locks. That's a tubular pick, and it's very interesting, um, the design of this. And actually, Strom is here to pick this lock because I fail at tubular picks. <laughs> um, but it's just these little levers. And the way they work is that you put them in the tubular lock. And now they're all arranged with those stacks of pins. And then you go and you could... S oh, my. You slide these... I don't want to loosen it. You could slide these levers up and down so that you can manipulate the, the pin stacks in there. And uh, oh, I thought I had it that time. <laughs> um, and Strom's gonna pick this because yeah, he can and I fail. On the camera or? No, nah, just do it. Okay. You guys just watch here. For a second. I'm just gonna go on. You, you okay. alert, alert me. Right, you'll, you'll hear it when it's done. I won't need to Hold up a red light. So our next type of lock is a dimple lock. And again, it's the same. It's essentially a pin tumbler, but it's arranged differently, uh, which makes it, uh, quote unquote, harder to pick. And the keyway is horizontal, which is the main difference. Um, so whereas you were going like this into a, into a lock and you were able to pick up and down, now you have this limited space um, vertically to pick. You have lots of horizontal room, but that doesn't really make a difference.
Um, dimple picks, of course, for picking dimple locks. Much smaller than these type of picks, and I have a picture of it. Um, and you could also bump dimple locks. I think you could bump tubular locks, but I don't know if anybody's tried because it requires the use of a tubular key cutter, which most most people don't have access to. Um, and dimple locks are essentially considered to be more high security. Um, they're used in a lot of door locks uh, for cars. Um, the bar thing that you put across your steering wheel sometimes uses the dimple locks. Um, they're considered a, a better pin tumbler for the most part, when in fact m they may or may not be depending on their exact features. And the queso in the picture is actually a good lock um, with features that I, I don't want to get into because it's, it's too time consuming. And so that's what they look like. Um, so fundamentally the same as far as opening and unlocking the lock, but um, arranged differently. And here's a picture of a cobble lock, which is actually another really good dimple lock. And you can see it's not one, but they have three. There you go. So. Did you fuck it up? Huh? Well, I, I can if I want to. No, don't fuck it up. Well, actually, uh, the prob probably best to show no, no, how don't. you can fuck it up. Well, the problem with the, the tubular locks is if you open it, now you've moved those top pins, but the, and if you move it too far, they'll fall into the wrong holes. Well, here it's set. I can reset and show the, show the camera. Oh, you did it. Good one. <laughs> All right. I don't know if you guys can see that. No. I probably need to get it. There. Yeah. So, you see how... Wow, this is hard. So right here is where this thing should be, but the, the other side is over here. So now I can't put that key in because it needs to engage both those little pieces. See it on the picture here? See, I can't put the key in at all. Yeah. Um, so if you're going to put tubular locks, you need to be careful to only open it so far as that it'll pop the lock open. And once you do that, you want to... You want to let go so that you don't put it far enough, too far, yeah. and do that. Or and just make sure to twist it back to where you found it first. Yeah. Oh, and wait. One yeah. other thing is that the tubular pick, once you pick it, you tighten this, and you have a copy of the key, essentially. Yeah. So, is it set? Yeah, it's set. You sure? Mm-hmm. Yeah, open. <laughs> you fuck fuck my this should. <laughs> oh, yeah, you can fix it. I don't really care about your lock, Strom. Okay, so um, the dimple lock is a Kaba, and it's essentially a dimple lock with three sets of, well, three, I don't know how to explain it. They're arranged in a row, and it's three pin chamber rows. Uh, very hard to pick, because you can see it's very convoluted, hard to move around in that. I think it has uh, 13 pins total possible but they also leave pins open so that it suffers from the same problem as the tubular lock, that if you pick it or bump it and you turn it, it fucks up the lock and it won't open or unopen. And they're dimple picks, and you see they're very small. Um, I haven't used them, but I hear they're very effective at what they do against most dimple locks. So, okay. Now the fun part begins. That was all boring bullshit, but... Uh, introduction to lock bumping. How many people know what bumping is? Most people who know me. Cool. <laughs> um, we're going to get into how bumping works, uh, what pick guns are, how to make bump keys, uh, improvements in bumping, defending against bumping, checking for bumping. Um, for those who don't know 